Alrighty guys, so last time we saw the large sample confidence interval, let's go ahead and move on to the small sample. So the purpose of creating a confidence interval, again, this is just rehash, um, is to provide an estimate for the population parameter, and we're still working with the parameter of the mean. So the central limit theorem can help us assume that a sampling distribution is normal for sample sizes greater than or equal to 30, right? However, sometimes a large sample size or the population standard deviation is not available to you. So in these situations, the z-distribution cannot be used because the z-distribution basically works off the assumption that the distribution is normal. And so for a sample size greater than or equal to 30, that sampling distribution is approximately normal, so it's okay. But with a t-distribution, it basically allows us some flexibility. So we don't have to have a sample size of 30 or more. And basically, that t-distribution, the shape of it depends really on the sample size. And technically, in, to be more particular, do degrees of freedom, df. So there's a critical t-score, just like there was a critical z-score, that's tied to the upper and lower limits of the interval. And so let's come back down here. So we have our margin of error is the t-critical times the standard error. And standard error for the sampled standard deviation is exactly the same as, the um, as we saw before. It's just the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Degrees of freedom is just n minus 1. And that really, we only need to look up the critical t-score. That's about it. Um, and then the population mean for, is uh, the mean of the sample means. So that's kind of, we've already seen that before, that the mean of the sample means is still just the mean that we've worked with this whole time. Um, so now talking about this t distribution. So here I have three kind of different distributions. The first one is kind of like the lowest one, and it's the most spread out. And that's basically for degrees of freedom of 4, a.k.a. a sample size of 5, right? So with the sample size of 5, we're not as exact, we're not as accurate. So the t-distribution kind of takes that into account, and it's more spread out. Um, and as our sample size gets bigger and bigger, so as we see for degrees of freedom of 9, a.k.a. a sample size of 10, it gets more and more, it looks more and more normal. Um, and then when we reach 30 or more, we're basically working with z again. Um, but in particular, let me just show you real quick. This t, this t table, you see the degrees of freedom? So for every degrees of freedom, there is a set of t values. And as you go all the way down, for infinity, those values there basically correspond to the z distribution. So that's basically the, the whole concept of the t distribution. The higher the sample size is, the more it looks like the z distribution or normal distribution. Does that make sense? So that's about it for t. Now, going back to the confidence interval kind of idea. So I have here, this area is the confidence level, right? <clears throat> um, but our t table works off the area from the t all the way up. So we can go look down here. So you see the shaded area is t all the way up. So it's not actually from 0 to t. So what do we do? Oh, stress. So <laughs> what we do is we have the confidence level as the inside. The two tails, or the outside, is 1 minus the confidence level, right? But we only want 1. So we do 1 minus the confidence level, all of that divided by 2. So we'll have a bunch of sample mean. Well, actually, we'll have a sample mean here. And here in the middle, we have a sample mean plus the margin of error, and the sample mean minus the margin of error. Now these margin of error, again, or these upper and lower limits are tied to the critical t, both negative and positive. And at the end of the day, we can say with whatever level of confidence that the population mean lies within this interval. Cool, so it's basically exactly the same idea. And that's why I only do one example, because honestly, the only thing that changes is how we find the critical value. Um, in this case, it's the t. So to find the t again, you do 1 minus the confidence level over 2, and you look up the degrees of freedom. So you have to go down to the corresponding degrees of freedom, which again is just n minus 1. So you can see that formula right up there. Um, and 1 minus the confidence level over 2. So you don't have any friends in statistics class, but you really want to see what the class average is. You ask the 16 people you know in the class what their grade is. You find an average and standard deviation of 60 and 24 from the sample, respectively. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the class grade average. So our midpoint is still, still, our midpoint is 60. These are x bars, and these are t's. So 60 gets a t score of 
it's still just zero because it's still the midpoint, right? And t represents um, how many standard errors away the sample mean is, just like the z-score did. Alrighty, and so we're trying to find 95% confidence interval, so that means we're here and here. And our next thing is we're looking for the t-critical, right? And t-critical works off of that area. So this area here is 1 minus the confidence level over 2. So it's 1 minus 0 0.95 over 2, aka 0 0.025. But that's not the only thing we need for the t-distribution, or the t-score, right? So the critical t we need, the conf 1 minus the confidence level over 2, which we got 0 0.025 and also degrees of freedom, right? Which degrees of freedom in this case is n minus one, right? AK 15, because we have a total of 16 people in our sample. Does that make sense? So let's look that up. And now, in particular, again, I made this table. If you guys can use it in class, that'd be great. If not, it's fine. This kind of longer way, that's the, that's the way you would do it for any, pretty much any table. But the one I have here also has confidence levels there. So instead of doing the math for 0 0.025 and whatever, um, you could just look up 0 0.95. You see that? So you look up 0 0.95 um, or 0 0.025 if you do the math. Either way, they're exactly the same. Um, and degrees of freedom was 15. So we connect the dots and we get a t, a critical t of 2.131. Does that make sense? So 2.131 is the t. And now we need to find the margin of error. So the margin of error is the critical t times the standard error. So that's 2.131 times, what was our standard error? I actually didn't calculate it yet, right? So our standard error for the mean is standard deviation over square root n. So we have 24 over the square root of 16. So that's 24 over 4, aka 6. Right? So times 6 equals, and then we get 12.786. Yay! Are we done? No, right? We still need to get the full confidence interval. So we got the margin of error, great. But our confidence interval at the end of the day is x, the sample mean, x bar, plus or minus the margin of error. So we get 60 plus or minus 12.786. So that leaves me with 72.786. And the lower one is 47.214. So we could be 95% confident that the true average class grade lies between 47.214 and 72.786. So that's basically how you would interpret that. This is for the t-distribution. Let's go ahead and do a couple practice problems before we move on to sample portions.